Hello, puppies and kittens. Are we ready to etherate? Woohoo! Hell that's, yeah! That's what we're up to now. What is that weird a... creature? Is that, is that a bunny? You you no, brought? I'm in a new studio, and this one is infested <laughs> with kittens. <laughs> there are worse infestations to have. <laughs> I have below me, I have a puppy. I have here, I have a kitten. For the first time, oh, Arn brought his own one, kittens. Yeah, this one I actually found in the street. Uh, that This kitten, I, I found her when she was like six weeks old. I saw something in my rearview mirror darting under and between cars in traffic. Oh. And it was, a, it was a suburban street, so I pulled my Jeep sideways to stop, stop traffic entirely. So I could get out and get the kitten whenever, because I thought at first was it was a squirrel, but then I realized no, that's a kitten, a tiny kitten. Oh god! And I, so I, I grabbed her, and she was quick, and, fa and so I, I fell down and everything in traffic while trying to catch her while she's ducking and dodging and everything. I finally got her, and she bit right through my hand, and I, I handed her to my <laughs> wife, and we're in a jeep with no doors and no roof, and nothing to carry the kitten, and all you just hang it, hold on to this kitten. <laughs> So I get I get back in the driver's seat and I'm like, what are we gonna do to find this cat a home? And my wife says, She's mine. No. <laughs> That's how that happens. Yes. And she has she has ginormous green eyes and she's very, very loving. Anyway, what's everybody else got to say? Woohoo. Made it back Nothing from Manti. Manti yeah, Temple. Tell me about that. that was pretty Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. Um, they had the you go through the annex, and the first thing is the money changers of the temple. They have all the temple clothes for rent and garments and stuff. It was pretty wild. But Aaron, you would have loved it. We had dinosaurs. The creation room starts with like the planet forming, and it goes to minerals, to plants, to dinosaurs, to um, wild animals, to um, farm animals and stuff. So it was pretty cool. Psychedelic oh, yeah, mushrooms that, in there. I'm so happy that they kept <laughs> the old artwork. They didn't rip it out. That's so good. I'm so happy about that. No. Yeah. Longest surviving um, temple mural in the Brighamite tradition. She was 1886 before the temple okay. even opened. So, Oh, and in the world room, they, they when you first walk in, you turn around, there's the Tower of Babel, and there's also a golden calf painted on the wall. And so it's pretty wild. Right before you walk down into the Baptist font that's upheld by 12 golden oxen or eight golden oxen or whatever. Yeah, the, the oxen. Amazing. Okay, so who is Me? reading? <laughs> I mean, the first verse of this chapter is calling out to Omer explicitly. So I Not think, really. I mean, I mean if you... If I mean, if you want to lead like begat Omer as begat Homer. Well, it's, then it's maybe. like, I'm, I'm surprised you don't know this, Homer, but you know, like ancient Hebrew doesn't have vowels. Well, ancient Egyptian doesn't have consonants. So it's. Yeah. Just... <laughs> In ancient Egyptian, Homer is pronounced with the silent T. That's right. Yeah. We all know so this. If you, have, so, if you have a language with, with no consonants, would that just like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for Ether 8 though. This is crazy that we're we're gonna be talking about all the dark black magic stuff again. Mm -hmm. Secret Sick combinations. Sick shit. Okay. And it came to pass that he begat Omer, and Omer reigned in his stead, and Omer begat Jared, and Jared begat sons and daughters, and Jared rebelled against his father and came and dwelt in the land of Heth. Now, I just want to. I just got to point this out, right? So this book started with Jer the Jaredites and the brother of Jared, Mohanrai Morian Kamer, that we made so much fun of. That isn't actually named in the book, right? This is a different Jared, <laughs> like nine generations after, and now it is to the a different Jared that is part of the Jaredites. So just want to make that distinction. <laughs> yeah, there's, imp there's imp something important I need to say. Yes, Mr. Bond. Exactly. <laughs> now you what, Bryce, nice. what Bryce said is important, though, because we have a, a main fi figure coming up, too, that plays with the same kind of name thing. So look forward to it. Mm. 
and it came to pass that he did flatter many people because of his cunning words until he had gained the half of the kingdom. And when he had gained the half of the kingdom, he gave battle unto his father. And he did carry away his father into captivity and did make him serve in captivity. And now the day in the days of the reign of Omer, he was Omer. in captivity. <laughs> do, 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 do you want me to change it to Tomer, Bryce? <laughs> do you now? I just want you to read the uh, the authentic Egyptian, all right? It's not uh -huh. too much to ask. Authentic, quote-unquote, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it came to pass that he begat sons and daughters, among whom were Esrom and Coriantumer. <laughs> There's a callback. <laughs> Coriantumer. Burr, burr, burr. One of our our villains from what is it, Helaman? Where where was Coriantumer? Do you remember the case? Oh, I, I forget. Was I think it was first... Helaman. I, I no, think uh, Coriantumer is on the spice rack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but those names like Korahor, Coriantumer, it, it it's important to note those because they're little Jaredite secret tokens peppered in the later book. Mm, there you go. I like that way of looking at it. Oh, and uh, Peter, you missed the uh, came to pass. We on three already? Do you... yeah. Yes. Do your job. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> tough because these the, like these and it came to passes are in the middle of verses instead of all of the verses yeah. starting with it. I need to. So need... that's just throwing everybody off here. <laughs> Except really for you, Gaze. You, you know. I really you need to pay either. attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they were exceedingly angry because of the doings of Jared their brother, insomuch that they did raise an army and gave battle unto Jared. And it came to pass that they did give battle unto him by night. And it came to pass that when they had slain the army of Jared, they were about to slay him also. And he pled with them that they would not slay him, and he would give up the kingdom unto his father. And it came to pass that they did grant unto him life. And now Jared became exceedingly sorrowful because of the loss of the kingdom. For he had set his heart upon the kingdom and upon the glory of the world. Now the daughter of Jared being exceedingly expert and seeing the sorrows of her father thought to devise a plan whereby she could redeem the kingdom unto her father. Oh shit. A so the daughter of Jared, we have <laughs> oh, an no. actual woman that's actually <laughs> playing a part in the book. Oh. <laughs> and without a name. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about. The brother of Jared and the daughter of Jared. But this <laughs> daughter of Jared is like the <laughs> great, 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 great granddaughter. <laughs> uh-huh. Now the daughter of Jared was exceedingly fair. I love that. Now we're talking about a woman, but she's like totally hot. So pay attention here, here readers. Okay. She I, I, is. She's totally hot. Uh, he, he, if uh, Smith wanted to appeal to the uh, uh, modern audience, he would have written exceedingly fine. <laughs> she, yeah. Uh, and it came to pass that she did talk with her father and said unto him, Whereby hath my father so much sorrow? Hath he not read the record which our fathers brought across the great deep? Behold, is there not an account concerning them of old that they by their secret plans did obtain kingdoms and great glory? And now, now, I'm curious, uh, what record, what account is she referring to here? Right? Is this like the original place that the original Jaredites brought with them or something? Like, did they bring a record along with them? So right here, well, 24, okay. 24 Jaredite plates right here. Yeah, and I'm but that's what they're writing Smith. right now, though, right? Like, did they bring a pre-existing record with them, or is she just referring to the record that they are writing as... Like, it never talks writing? about it. Well, no, well, it, but what they did was they built all those mods they built all the monoliths and stuff also have all the Jared writings on them when they find the ruins. And that's, that's the plates that they found are these 24 plates that they found in Mosiah. Yeah. Are, Ever since Tomer said, you know, right Joseph Smith wanted to say that, you know, wanted to say, you know, he, with how hot she was, that, you know, how would he have a phrase that, you know, he would call her fine instead of that. She was, what was it? 
what fair. was the, the, the fair? Yeah. And I'm just I'm just wondering if you take the context out from a different period, put it in that and give him a look into the future. How do we say this? OK, have God fashioned her like unto a house made of brick. <laughs> Oh, and, and uh, the website, uh, the official Book of Mormon website, uh, has the account. Uh, it cites Third Nephi six twenty eight, which reads, "And they did enter into a covenant one with another, yeah, even into that covenant which was given by them of old, which covenant was given and administered by the devil to combine against all righteousness." But in Third Nephi, that's referring to like the brass plates and the records that the Nephites have been keeping the small and the large plates as well. So like it's referring to those pre-existing plates. So like Jer the that, Jared yes, plate, so. Tomer, I don't disagree with you that the church's own website links to Third Nephi, but this what we're reading right here is supposedly written in like 1800 BCE and the plates that were like that are referred to in third Nephi that record that's referring to stuff that was written post 600 BCE so um, yeah I, I'm, you say that like it's true <laughs> look, I, for the sake of argument sometimes you just got to grant the premise of bullshit all right <laughs> that's how we operate in these spaces it's really confusing, but when they find the ruins of the Jaredites, that's where these 24 plates, these are the same plates they find. That's what okay. these writings are. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, I'm just splitting hairs at this point. <laughs> and now, therefore, let my father send for Akish, the son of Kimno. And behold, I am fell, and I will dance before him, and I will please him, that he'll we, that he will desire me to wife. And he replied, oh, "She is fair. <laughs> no, she's a brick house." No, sorry. <laughs> mate, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Wherefore, if he shall desire of thee that ye shall give unto him me to wife, then shall he say, I will give her if ye will bring unto me the head of my father, the king. And so now I'm just I just want to spend a little time on this. If you are a woman Mormon looking for representation in your scriptures, trying to understand how scriptures apply to you in these the latter days. This is the most functional female character we have out of the Book of Mormon. <laughs> uh, awesome. So this is this is you know just to, just to let you know like if if this is what we are trying to like model our lives after and like being Christ like and all of that and the Book of Mormon will get us closer to Christ than anything. Women, you're supposed to be sex objects. Just never forget that. All right, that is your purpose is there and your function. Is there a problem with the most significant female character here being an exotic dancer who's hot? I mean, <laughs> is there a problem with it? I mean, I mean, she right. could be like Matahari. Like, give it, a, give it a chance. Well, and Omer, Omer is her grandfather, so that's pretty crazy too. So the guy who invented Wonder Woman, the, the comic book writer who invented Wonder Woman, for those of you who don't know, he had this like idyllic side of, side of marriage situation. He had two wives and it was a perpetual threesome. That was the, the life that he lived. And when he came up with this Wonder World Woman character, he had to explain to his wives why, why he has this uh, this superhero woman who fights all these bad guys in their in her underwear. <laughs> Because that's just how we think. Yeah. <laughs> to come up with a heroic character, that's what she's going to be. Yeah. Well, things just don't seem to change much, do they? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And now Omer was a friend to Akish. Wherefore, when Jared had sent for Akish, the daughter of Jared danced before him, that she pleased him. In so much, pleased, yeah, quote unquote pleased, in so much that he desired her to wife. And it came to pass that he said unto Jared, Give her unto me to wife. <laughs> to wife. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> all wife for all night long. Yeah, if, if wife is not a noun, a possessive noun with reference to a husband, she is a verb. <laughs> Yeah. And what was that line out, out of out of nice. Total Recall? <laughs> what can I say? I give good wife. <laughs> I don't remember that part. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> and Jared said unto him, I will give her unto you, if ye will bring unto me the head of my father, the king. And it came to pass that Akish gathered it in unto the house of Jared all his kinsfolk, and said unto them, Will ye swear unto me that ye will be faithful unto me in the thing which I shall desire of you? And it came to pass that they all swear unto him by the God of heaven, and also by the heavens, and also by the earth, and by their heads. Their heads. <laughs> and whoso should vary from the assistance which Akish desired should lose his head. And whoso should divulge whatsoever thing Akish made known unto them, the same should lose his life. <laughs> This is all yeah. just Masonic shit, right? Like, this is all just, you know, harping on the anti-Masonry uh, elements within the Book of Mormon. That was so hot in the 1820s. I was really yeah. hoping this would go another way, you know. He says, you know, give me, give me my father's head. And she goes, well, I got, got close. I gave your father a head. Something like that. <laughs> cool. It's her grandfather's head that they want. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and cool. you had to go there. Yes. That's what it says in the book. I didn't do it. it, it yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it came to pass that thus they did agree with Akish, and Akish did administer unto them the oaths which were given by them of old, who were also sought power, who also sought power, sorry, which had been handed down even from Cain. Who was a murderer from the beginning? Murderer. Red rum. <laughs> <laughs> and they were kept up by the power of the devil to administer these oaths unto the people, to keep them in darkness, to help such as sought power to gain power, and to murder. And to plunder and to lie and commit all manner of wickedness and of all times. <laughs> I love you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> you make this horrible book so entertaining. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was the daughter of Jared who put it into his heart to search up these things of old. And Jared put it into the heart of Akish. Wherefore, Akish administered it unto his kindred and friends, leading them away by fair promises to do whatsoever thing he desired. And it came to pass that they formed a secret combination, even as they of old, which combination is most abominable and wicked above all in the sight of God? You hear God that, Masons? <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't just invoke that for nothing. Like, you have to recognize the anti Masonic sentiment that was extremely popular in the, 1820, the late 1820s after the William Morgan affair that happened. And anti Masonic periodicals were extremely prevalent. In fact, the first uh, the first article or the first uh, sorry, the first newspaper that took notice of the Book of Mormon actually was an anti-masonic paper that reprinted portions of the Book of Mormon and rewrote them satirically uh, to make fun of Joseph Smith and Martin Harris and all of the contrivers who were responsible or the the secret combinators who were responsible for creating the Book of Mormon. So like yeah, I... just acknowledging the context of when this was written. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta apologize that somehow I missed all these little subtleties. We have the hot stripper promising that she will do whatsoever he wants, and you, th and and you see the 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 mention of them or the the reference to masons. <laughs> no, <laughs> but but it's also to Brighamites because that's what's interesting in, in this is that they warn and describe this stuff in the Book of Mormon, and then the first thing that happens is it gets in in um instated in the early church you have the Dan Danites and the sisters of zion start up and the, these blood oaths make it all the way into modern endowment ceremony that the church does so when we're talking about secret combinations if it's priesthoods or priest crafts it's really the same thing it's still magic powers it's just right. do you get it from yahweh or Satan? okay and, 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 but, when, it's when you go from that to, to the formed a secret combination. I'm starting to think of all kinds of positions that would qualify as a secret combination. 
dark I'm just place, place, not dark seeing the, the Masonic thing. Right. So like I when when it talks about them losing their heads, obviously that's Masonic uh, language. Right. And that is part of what used to be part of the Mormon oath was you would mimic slitting uh, of your throat, which was that you were consenting to have somebody slit your throat if you revealed the secrets, which is exactly what was in here. Uh, those are those are the blood oaths, and those were removed from the temple ceremonies uh, in the early 1990s. Uh, so Shannon, if she were here, uh, is somebody who has gone through or who went through the temple when they were still performing those somatic elements, the ritualistic spell of covenanting to have your blood be spilled if you reveal the secrets. But what, mm -hmm. while we're on covenants, I've been watching conference. It's conference weekend, and they're really pushing this new thing coined term called the covenant path. I call it the covenant pact. It's a blood pact. It's a, you know what I mean? This covenant path is scary stuff. And why, why they're saying this is this is they're scared everybody's jumping ship. And so it's like, remember the oaths you, you have made in the temple. These are serious blood oaths and you have to follow them. Don't jump ship. Yeah. Your life literally depends on it. That's the implication of the oaths that you make in the temple. Okay. Scary stuff. I see. So Carlos finally got. Oh yes, yes, yes. They have, indeed they have. So um, weird. Wow. Once we get to the raciest part of the Book of Mormon, now the comments fill up talking about this <laughs> unnamed woman <laughs> character. Imagine that. So, the Brock Palandari uh, <laughs> offers twenty pounds. Says thank you. It says I am the Lord of the Dance CT. Dance CT. I don't know what CT. I'm is. the Lord of the Dance. Okay. Oh, thank you very much for that. And then Aunt Jer says, Aaron, your joke was way funnier than your co-host gave it credit for. Shame on them. <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> and then Matt White said, uh, let me see, Bryce, it's uh, Dancing Before Him and Please Him, the talent show precursor. Brigham's Got Talent. <laughs> <laughs> That's so dark. Yeah, <laughs> very good. <laughs> yeah, I going. like that one. Then Vesta Freya says, uh, "Well, at least the creator of Wonder Woman didn't have her costume look like a French maid outfit. That would that would take some explaining to his wife. Well, you missed the point. It would take some explaining <laughs> to his wife. Have you seen it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Without the apron, but with everything else. Yeah." <laughs> And then uh, Matt White says, there needs to be an audiobook reading on Audible. Tomer reads the Book of Mormon. <laughs> yes, there you go, I second that. For money, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, now, verse 19. For the Lord walketh not in secret combinations, neither doth he will that man should shed blood, but in all things hath forbidden it. From the beginning of man. <laughs> Except the very first story in the Book of Mormon when God commands Nephi to cut off the head of Laban, an innocent drunk guy, and steal his book of scriptures. Yeah, no, no, no. God really abhors that whole shedding of blood. For a bunch of pleasurized Isaiah. That's pretty much what he stole from Laban. Mm. And now I, Morona, do not write the manner of the oaths and combinations, for it hath been made unto me that they had among all people, and they are had among the Lamanites, and they are had. Okay. And they have caused so, the death. I, I'm just amazed by this, right? So the Jaredites formed a secret combination. And God is like, no, I don't work in secret combinations. And then all of the Jaredites, spoiler alert, die and what a thousand years later in Messiah we have the missionaries going out and they find the plates and they you know exhume these these golden plates and they translate them and and Moroni is like oh secret combinations <laughs> apparently outlived the civilization from which from whence the secret combination sprang isn't that remarkable it's one of the funnest things to trace in the book of mormon is this secret combination that goes it's the through only the whole thing. consistent thing in the book <laughs> i know it's been helping me really out with my grimoire for sure the satanic book of mormon there you go <laughs> okay <laughs> and they have caused the destruction of these people of whom i am now speaking 
and also the destruction of the people of Nephi. And whatsoever nation shall uphold such great combinations to get power and gain until they shall spread over the nation. Behold, they shall be destroyed. For the Lord will not suffer that the blood will... Sorry. For the Lord will not suffer that the blood of his saints, which shall be shed by them, shall always cry unto him from the ground for vengeance upon them, and yet he avenge them not. Wherefore, O ye Gentiles, it is wisdom in God that these things should be shown unto you, that thereby ye may repent of your sins, and suffer not that these murderous combinations shall get above you, which are built up to get power and gain. Dash! And the work, yeah, even the work of destruction come upon you. Yeah! Even the sword of the justice of the eternal God shall fall upon you to your overthrow and destruction, if ye shall suffer these things to be. Wherefore the Lord commandeth you, when ye shall see these things come among you, that ye shall awake to a sense of your awful situation, because of this secret combination which shall be among you. Or will be unto it because of the blood of them who have been slain. For they cry from the dust for vengeance upon it, and also upon those who built it up. For it cometh to pass. <laughs> what? Very what? Does that count? To pass. <laughs> That's Hang a double on. one. <laughs> cometh to pass. I don't think it counts. <laughs> cometh to pass. No, no, that, that one doesn't count. It has to. It, no. it has to be in the in the in the past tent. It came to pass. Yeah. It cometh, well, it to, cometh pass to pass is is in the future, oh. and we don't know if that actually happens. Prophecies, I don't trust prophecies. Yeah. Of course, you know something you wicked. It. This way cometh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for it cometh to pass that whoso buildeth it up seeketh to overthrow the freedom of all lands, nations, and countries, and it bringeth to pass the destruction of all people, for it is built up by the devil, who is the father of all lies, even that same liar who beguiled our first parents. Yeah. Even that same liar who hath caused man to commit murder from the beginning, who hath hardened the hearts of men, that they have murdered the prophets, and stoned them, and cast them out from the beginning. Wherefore, I, Moroni, am commanded to write these things, that evil may be done away, and that the time may come that Satan may have no power <laughs> upon the hearts of the children of men but that they may be persuaded to do good continually, that they may come unto the fountain of all righteousness and be saved. Amen. <laughs> oh, man. The devil stuff's the best part. Yeah, but... And then we have the a comment stuff. here from Bra Talandari. Offers another 20 pounds, thank you very much, and says, it would take too long to explain the Lord of the Dance. Yeah, I, I had to look this up. The Sete or whatever, S-E-T-T-E-E. -E -E. Is is this like something that's like like passed around like music traditions, like Dance Macabre, where like a whole bunch of people do a different rendition of it, and it's just like part of the whole zeitgeist of music or something? Like, never mind. You know what? If it takes too long to explain it, me yeah. wondering what it's all about I got is out going of, to just waste time. All I got out of Lord of the Dance was Michael Flatley doing a jig. <laughs> right. And then uh, Vesta Freya says, uh, I recently watched Cat Baloo, and it was uh, not so subtle dig at Mormonism. Uh, her dad was complaining to Jackson, a hired hand who was Native American, about admitting he understood not Hebrew. Admit. Not What's admit. that? Not oh. admit. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Wow. I'll have to check out that show, though. That's really... Yeah. Isn't that like an animated kids show? Like Paw Patrol no. level kind of thing? No, no, no. Cat Blue? No, no. That was... Oh, I, I forget her name now. Um, the, Jane Fonda? 
Jane Fonda. Yes, Jane Fonda. It was it was a western. It was a campy western that had that looked like a sexy a sexy western kind of thing. And what would happen when I, this was an old movie, and I was a little kid when this came out, and then my my parents would like drop me off at the movie theater and go off and have fun, and just leave me at the kids matinee until the adult movies played, and then I would just sit through the adult movies too. And so I I saw a lot of stuff I shouldn't see at eight years old. <laughs> It was the age Especially of back then. <laughs> back then, yeah. a PG-13 movie was like a hard R in the 80s. And it made him yeah. the man he is today. <laughs> in a way, yeah. <laughs> and I turned out fine. <laughs> yeah. All right, so continue, Tomer. I finished the chapter. All right, we have... Let, let me see what the other chapter is going to be because I'm, I'm looking at the time and I have a little bit of an issue. Oh, Can no. we get through how many fucking verses is this? 35 verses. Well, I um, thought we're doing two hours. Uh, normally, yes. Uh, and we and we are. Uh, well, well, I mean, what, what I need to do is I need to get off 30. I need to get off at least 15 minutes early. So instead of going to seven or well, let me, let me put it instead of completing the second hour. I need to get off 15 minutes before the hour. So, so like we, do we have 15 an hour and 10 minutes, minutes, an hour and 10 or 15 minutes from now is how much time, how much time I've got. Oh, so yeah, we can read this. We can get through it. ether, I think. Okay. Or at least through yeah. a couple chapters. Cause there's, um, all right. So just coming up. make sure that we get through this one in an hour so that I can get off into the, the other show. Yeah. Okay. We'll just read until you're, have to go. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you want me to read or do you want you to read? Oh, that's right. That, that I should be reading this one. Okay, sorry. Yeah. All right. And, and now, I, Moroni, proceed with my record. Therefore, behold, it came to pass that by <laughs> us, Try the secret combinations of Akish and his friends. Behold, they did overthrow the kingdom of Tomer. Yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> the Lord was merciful unto Tomer and also his sons and his daughters who did not seek destruction. His destruction. And... <laughs> good to know. <laughs> so I'm if you ever have that... kids, Tomer, you're I'm good. happy that I have sons and daughters who don't want to kill me. <laughs> That's best. And the Lord warned Tomer in a dream that he should depart out of the land. Wherefore, Tomer departed out of the land with his family and traveled many days and came over and passed by the hill of Shim and came over by the place where the Nephites were destroyed. And from thence forward, from Eastward. thence. And from thence, learn. yes. Yeah, from thence, uh, eastward, and came to a place which was called Ablom, <laughs> by the seashore. And there he pitched his tent. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> and also his sons pitched their tents, and his daughters, and that was a trick. And all his household, save it were Jared and his family. And... It came to pass that Jared was anointed king over the people by the hand of wicked men. And he gave unto Akish his daughter to wife. And it came to pass that Akish sought the life of his father-in-law. And he applied unto those whom he had sworn by the oath of the ancients. And they had obtained the head of the father-in-law as he sat upon his throne, giving obedience, <laughs> giving audience to his people. Whoa. For so great wow. had been the spreading of this wicked and secret society. Sorry, that it had corrupted Tomer. the hearts of all the people. <laughs> Therefore, Jared was murdered upon his throne, and Akish reigned Whoa. in his stead. And his fan came out. The, the yeah. implication there is yeah. that he was on the throne and they cut off his head and everyone was there like, yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool. They, they all <laughs> the only way they could solve a crime. Were, were you there? That's, that's the only way. Yeah. 
Were you there? I thought the, the Ides of March were bad. <laughs> it came to pass that Akish began to be jealous of his son. Therefore, he shut him up in prison and kept him upon little or no food until he had suffered death. Suffered death. <laughs> I wonder if there's any yeah. treatment for that. <laughs> and now, the brother of him that suffered the, the brother of him that suffered death. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't call it the brother of Jared again. They were like, no, we yeah. missed that one already. <laughs> and his name was Nimrah. <laughs> Uh, was angry with his father because of, the, of that which his father had done unto his brother. And it came to pass that Nimrah gathered together a small number of men and fled out of the land and came over and dwelt with Tomer. Fuck you. And it came to pass that Akish began beget other sons, and they won the hearts of the people, notwithstanding they had sworn unto him to do all manner of iniquity according to that which he desired. They, they are <laughs> wicked people. <laughs> Father, what evil do you wish me to achieve? Hodam, <laughs> son! Hodam! <laughs> 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 now the people of Akish were desirous for grain, even as Akish was desirous for power. Wherefore, the sons of Akish did offer them money, mm -hmm. by which means they drew away, for them, uh, drew away the more part of the people after them. And there began to be a war between the sons of Akish and Akish, Ooh. which lasted for the space <laughs> of many years. Yeah! Unto yeah. the destruction of nearly all the people of the kingdom. Yeah. yeah. Even all, save it were 30 souls. And they who fled with the house of Tomer. Th this book has a lot of that, I've noticed. Let's just kill everybody. No reason. We just, yeah. We're really bored here. Wherefore, Tomer was restored again to the land of his inheritance. Yeah, I get, uh, yeah I'm still here. <laughs> and it came to pass that Tomer began to be old. Whoops, oh, I started to be old. <laughs> <laughs> when did that happen? I mean, I'm I'm 25, so yeah, I began to be old. <laughs> Sorry, Nevertheless, okay. in his old age, he begat Emer. <laughs> and he anointed Emer to be king to reign in his stead. Notice the... <laughs> The, the importance of the names, it goes from Omer <laughs> to Emer. Emer. <laughs> uh -huh. And then we're going to go to Umer and Umer. Umer. I, I don't know. There's like Umer. a children rhyme about this. I like to Umer, 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 Umer. <laughs> And after that, he had anointed Emer to be king. And after that, he had anointed Eber to be king. This was written so bad. <laughs> he, he saw peace in the land for the space of two years. No. And he died. <laughs> Having seen <laughs> exceedingly many days, which were full of sorrow. Oh, no. And oh, no. it came to pass that Emer did reign in his stead and did fill the steps of his father. <laughs> and the Lord began again to take the curse from off the land. And the house of Emer did prosper exceedingly under the reign of Emer. And in the space of sixty and two years, they had become exceedingly strong, insomuch that they became exceedingly rich, mm -hmm. having all manner of fruit and grain and, and of silks and fine linen <laughs> and of gold and of silver and precious things. All right, all right. Can we just can we just talk about that? Silks. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember the the silk industry in America being that big. Oh, oh, circa two thousand BCE, gold and silks and fine linen and silver and of unnamed other precious things. Hmm. So I well, found those I'm you sure guys... we had unnamed other you... precious things. I found you guys some apologetics on this and sent it to you. It's funny because they, they found they found a silkworm in the Americas that produces silk of really low quality. But they're like, oh, we found this this worm that produces silk. So it could have actually possibly maybe happened. <laughs> so the fact <laughs> that there's this 
the, there's this pre-Columbian silkworm that puts off this crappy silk. They're like, oh, me. But we don't know. Those Maybe spiders. those people were had figured out how to cultivate spiders. <laughs> Hordes of spiders. Well, I mean, it, it digs itself in so much deeper here. Remember, this is not like, look, all right, so... The whole Nephite, Lehite, you know, uh, uh, movement over to America, that happened 600 BCE, right? So we can, you know, ignore some of those anachronisms. This is talking about another 1600 years older than that. And it's about to go on a, a rant about all of the things that they had about them. Because they're so exceedingly rich, because they're so blessed. <laughs> because of the pride cycle. All right, shall I continue? Sure. Mm -hmm. And also... After all, and also all manner of cattle, of oxen, and cows, and sheep, and of swine, and of goats, and also many other kinds of animals which were useful for food of man. Like tapirs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposing just... that the, the cattle looked like bison, did they? <laughs> I want to say real quick, Dan Peterson's a pretty humorous kind of guy. Like, I, I put up a AI image I made of a Native American riding a taper, and he made the comment, that horse needs to lose some weight. <laughs> 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 and he's the one that came up with the whole taper thing, so it was pretty awesome. I was like, Dan, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> so speaking of horses, and they also had horses and asses and horses' asses, and there were elephants. 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 Oh, they were uh, elephants in America. Oh, <laughs> that's on the wooden submarines, Tomer. Well, <laughs> yeah. If you go back far enough, they did have mammoths. Well, that's what the Kirilons and Kumams are. Okay. <laughs> So are you telling me that Indians rode on elephants? Mammoths and horses. Horses at the same time were like this big in America. They were like oh wait a minute, something right? <laughs> what the f okay, <laughs> we don't. Okay, I just I just had to know what a kurlam is. <laughs> that sounds you invented. Know. You're the first person to know because nobody knows. <laughs> well, the first, oh my word. <laughs> well, welcome to the wonderful world of Mormon apologetics. Secure along so and keep going. Sorry, just Googled something. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to share this image. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, it, won't, it won't give me the link, damn it. Well, it <laughs> Yeah, what is a curlom? Do we think they existed from the Book of Mormon? <laughs> Fucking thing won't give me the. It won't let, let me, me copy the, the picture. URL so is bookofmormoncentral.com. No, it's Quora. <laughs> Even better. I figured out the chupacabra. Yeah, I wish I was. But what I'm basically looking at is a mammoth with tusks that both that go in both directions and it has no trunk or ears i think i know where it comes from it's uh, it's from roman boltunov from 1803 to, to four and i don't it's think a, it is related to the book of mormon it is yeah, a goofy looking it's a the horrible mormon, looking so. thing i wish i could show <laughs> i wish i could show you guys what it looks like but it, it, there's no link i can grab for this image um, oh and there's another I, image that shows a bantha What's that look like? Describe What's, it. Did you see Star Wars? <laughs> the the, the weird-looking noseless elephant with the with the rim. Oh, horns. okay, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There, so there's all kinds of weird them. shit in here, but it, but yeah, it, this was apparently not a real. This is something Joseph Smith made up. So we may as well call it a bantha. <laughs> okay, kirloms and kumoms. <laughs> <laughs> are, are these gender specific? I mean, is, is it because he mentions cows as if, you know, they're not bovids or cattle or they're, they're cows. They're, so the, it doesn't have any bulls. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let me just start this again. And they also had horses and asses and there were elephants and kurlams and kumams, all of which were useful <laughs> unto man. And more especially the elephants and kurlams and kumams. More oh, than yeah. horses? <laughs> Have you now seen Kumam? I mean, a have you seen the pyramids? And... Even bigger. 
<laughs> the pyramids of South America. Now we know. <laughs> we... <laughs> That's how they built them. I don't know what the fuck a Kurman is, but a Kurlam is even bigger. <laughs> and thus the Lord did pour out his blessings upon the land, which was choice above all other lands. And he commanded that whoso, whoso mm -hmm. should possess the whoso, whoso, as one word. Yes. He commanded that whoso should possess the land, should possess it unto the Lord. What the fuck does that mean? That's that's manifest destiny bullshit. Whoever owns this land should own it for the Lord. Like it should be yeah. the Lord's land. That is that's manifest destiny. Okay. Or they should be destroyed when they were ripened in iniquity. For upon such saith the Lord, I will pour out the fullness of my wrath. And Emer did execute judgment in righteousness all his days. And he begat many sons and daughters, and he begat Coriantum. Another and he one? anointed Coriantum to reign in his stead. Another one. And after he had anointed Coriantum to reign in his stead, he lived for four years, and he saw peace in the land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he even saw the son of righteousness, and did Ooh. rejoice in glory yeah. in the day, and he died in peace. I'm Isn't still like this. Yeah, he I said mean, he saw I, Jesus. If, if you remember, <laughs> if, if you remember, this term appears in Third Nephi twenty-five too, and which so is does Jesus basically come back. Wait a minute. If oh, you no, remember, he's not in the flesh. If you remember, the the term "son of righteousness" is from the the, the chapter is from fourth four Malachi Malachi four. Sorry, and and as I noted there, the original was "son with a U of righteousness." And Joseph <laughs> placed the son with a U to his son with an O. Yeah, yeah, we were and, talking about that. It's happened then, again. Yes, <laughs> he used the son of righteousness with an O again. And I'm still baffled by why Why would you do that? Because this the son is, is the son. Once again, this is antedated to like like 1800 BCE or whenever the Jaredites like the Jaredites came over on their wooden submarines and now we're reading about their immediate descendants and their civilization. So the, <laughs> if you think that Jesus appearing in the Book of Mormon, you know, before Jesus is actually born is absurd, well, here's Jesus appearing 2000 years before he was supposedly born. It's great. <laughs> ah. To Coriantum, right? That's the first time I've ever really noticed that, that another appearance of Jesus. Jesus visited uh, Joseph Smith in Kirtland, and now we have him right here visiting Coriantum mm -hmm. in the spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. be. Okay, I, I put a link in there. I don't know if Peter can show it or not, but I'm, I'm going to continue reading. And it came to pass that Coriantum did walk in the steps of his father and did build, did build many mighty cities. Many, one guy builds lots of cities, whole cities, and did administer that which is good unto his... Oh, what the fuck, dogs? <laughs> anyway, and uh, let's see, where was I? And, and did administer that which was good unto his people in all his days. And it came to pass that he had no children, even until he was exceedingly old. You had all this time. What the fuck were you doing? You built cities all by yourself. Whole lots of Just them. wait. Just wait. Read the next verse. Yeah. And it came to pass that his wife died, being a <laughs> an hundred and hundred. It's an hundred and two years old. And a mention of a woman. It came to pass that Coriantum took to wife in his old age a young maid and begot sons and daughters. Wherefore, he lived until he was an hundred and forty and two years old. There you go. Hey, uh -huh. women reading the Book of Mormon, you're looking for representation in the Book of Mormon. There you go. Either a sex yep. object or brood mares. There you go. That's your job. <laughs> That's your eternal role forever and ever and ever is to shit out babies. 
plus think mm. celestial there's two wives one one dead one another one so you get yeah. the two wives and that's too. that's a very good point yep uh, hey our modern day prophet is living the higher <laughs> law right now as yeah. are what the next three in line the All next three the higher law? <laughs> yeah and then the <laughs> next the verse Mormons. and it came to pass that he begat calm dot com <laughs> <laughs> and calm reigned in his stead. Dot com. <laughs> and he reigned 40 and nine years, and he begat Heth. And he also begat other sons and daughters. Uh, but only calm and Heth are important. <laughs> and the people had spread again all over the face of the land. And there began again to be exceedingly great wickedness upon the face of, of the land. And Heth began to embrace the secret plans again of old to destroy yeah. his father. <laughs> I got the whole fratricide plot, like subplot in here, it's very Freudian and I love it. Uh, I just love seeing this making a recurrence. But once again, this is like, I keep making the circle on my screen, right? This is the pride cycle. This is the, the byline throughout the whole Book of Mormon that people are righteous and then God blesses them and then they become unrighteous because they're so rich and they're so wealthy and then God curses them and they lose all their wealth and then a whole bunch of them die and then they become humble again and ask God for help and God actually helps them out and gives them riches again and the cycle repeats and continues. And not even God can pick up on this pattern. <laughs> <laughs> he set it in motion. <laughs> and... and Arn, I have, it. Oh, hold what? on, hold on, hold on, don't let it come to pass yet. So I have the image, and you have a few messages okay. to read. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let me see, what, what uh, where are the, where did I leave off in the middle? Oh, wow, okay, yeah. Just, so just before the, oh, wow one. Okay, so I got uh, Matt White then. Uh, Matt White, who uh, says, Bryce, don't forget the other brother, Polymer, who could spin quite a yarn. <laughs> <laughs> good old Polymer. <laughs> does does, does Matt one. do stand up? Because he's <laughs> And then Brah Talandari offers 100 pounds. Thank you so much. And says, I used to be a good Catholic until a a priest told me that a partner could say no, could not say no, because at that time, what the fuck? That, that's uh -huh. not only Catholics that think that stuff. That's pretty yeah. common in Mormonism, too, where the wife must submit and, like, scary. Yeah. And, and then yeah. agnostic till not says, Aaron, thanks for being amazing and changing people's life slash views on the right side. Well, thank you kindly for that. And then Matt White says, Aaron, you know, coconuts are not indigenous to the west of the Atlantic. They just turned up circa 1500, C 1500 AE AD. Yes, this confirms that coconuts migrate. They do. You've just revealed yourself to be a nerd. Probably carried by swallows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Peter, and 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 the image. So so this is a, a was a kumarar. <laughs> <laughs> a cure oh, awesome. <laughs> I awesome. Yeah. I think they did find a fossil record of that thing. <laughs> yeah. Isn't yeah. that horrible? <laughs> That's just such a wrong uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, if anybody is wondering, the guy who made this is called Roman uh, Bol Boltunov. Yeah. Oh, I want to know one thing. Tessa coming out of it? what used to be the trunk. It yeah, has a long time. It, the horns it, are actually prehensile. <laughs> it only drinks agave <laughs> syrup from the agave plant with its long tongue. Oh, no, apparently... see, it had so much trouble e eating that that's how they were domesticated so easily by the Jaredites. Apparently, <laughs> this is. And the cure is... like, oh, thank you. Finally. Appar <laughs> apparently, this is the first attempt to restore the Adam's mammoth. <laughs> Whoa. That is just such a wrong looking animal that. It just it makes the sense if, alone if they didn't me. find the trunk. Yeah, so because the, the eye isn't so much in the head as it is in the shoulder, because this thing has no neck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, no neck like at all. Kitty cat ears. <laughs> <laughs> I can I see someone how finding. I think what it does is it shoots out a spear-like tongue. <laughs> 
Because Tomer, isn't this what happened? Is someone was trying to draw what they saw in mammoth bones, and they came up with this? I thing. guess that that that's at least what Wikipedia says, and it's not the best source, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. So I, I get you know somebody was talking about it. This it might be an elephant and pig uh, uh, hybrid, but I, I think more elephant and rhino because when I look at this, it is a um, it's a helifino. <laughs> Have you guys seen Albert Durr's rhinoceros? He drew no. that thing without ever seeing it. He never saw it, only was described it. And you should look at it. It's amazing. Just from this okay. description, he drew it. All right. And it came to pass that he did dethrone his father, for he slew him with his own sword. And he did reign in his stead. And there came prophets in the land again, crying repentance unto them that they must prepare the way of the Lord for their or there should come curse upon the face of the land. Yeah. Even there should be a great famine in which they should be destroyed if they did not repent. But the people believed not the words of the prophets that were written on the subway walls. But they cast them out. Oh, and some the of them they cast into pits and left them to perish. This is Sparta! No. <laughs> and it came to pass <laughs> you say you're that, that they did all these things according to the commandment of the king. <laughs> and it came to pass that there began to be a great dearth upon the land. <laughs> Everything got dearthy. <laughs> And the inhabitants began to be destroyed exceedingly fast because of the dearth. Whoa. For there was no rain upon the face of the earth. This is reminding me of never ending story. The nothing is coming. This, this is because that's what dearth means, right? Yeah, okay. a lack of something. Yeah. yeah. And there came forth poisonous serpents also yeah. upon the face of the land. Not venomous, curiously. They're poisonous. So it doesn't matter if they bite you. Just don't eat them. <laughs> yeah, don't eat don't them. Don't touch them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, those, those poison dart snakes. <laughs> and they did poison many people. Well, stop eating the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it came to pass that their flocks began to flee before the poisonous serpents toward the land southward. Which was called no, my Q moms. <laughs> They're chasing them. They snake. <laughs> into the land southward, which was called by the Nephites Zarahemla. Mm, I've heard that name before. Yes, yes. Now, Thanks wasn't Zarahemla that. supposed to be? I mean, the land southward. Is that South America? Yes, it's capital city, okay. South America. Okay. If we're, if we're granting the Middle American model, whatever. came to. Pass that there were many of them which did perish by the way. Nevertheless, there were some which fled into the land southward. And it came to pass that the Lord did cause the serpents that they should pursue them no more. <laughs> Snakes Back chasing off. people, hordes of whole populations of people being chased <laughs> by snakes. Yeah. I mean, Not I'm a smoking. shovel in sight. <laughs> okay but that they should hedge up the way that people could not pass that whoso who, again the word whoso should attempt to pass might fall by the poisonous serpents and it came to pass that the people did follow the course of the beasts and did devour <laughs> the carcasses of them which fell by the way until they had devoured them all Ooh. now when the people saw that they must perish, they began to repent of their iniquities and cry to the Lord. And it came to pass that when they had humbled themselves sufficiently before the Lord, fucking dog, shut the fuck up. He did send rain upon the face of the earth and the people began to revive again. And there began to be fruit in the north countries and in all the countries round about. And the Lord did show forth his power unto them in preserving them from famine. Peter, you missed one came to pass. 
My bad. My, my no, no, bad. Peter. I was I was just okay. thinking that we're so lucky that Arn got into a new studio so we couldn't hear the dogs anymore. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because now I can't stop the dogs when they all go off anyway. Exactly. <laughs> well, you started right, it, so Arn. You started. You shouldn't have said this yeah. is Sparta because that's when it started. <laughs> Yeah, indeed, indeed. I, I woke the one up that was sleeping here, which is the one you hear the most. Belcor, shut up! What are you going to no. say, Bryce? So I want to mention uh, the 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 way because this is one of the bylines. Hold on, hold on. I guess, reasons, uh, yeah, go ahead. You know, this is one of the reasons we do this is to talk about how this book is used in the modern culture and in church today. And right when we read passages like this, that the the land be, there began to be a dearth which was there no rain uh, all of their flocks were fleeing uh serpents poisonous serpents apparently uh chasing all of the people and cornering them and killing a whole bunch of them um and all of these bad things are happening that are apparently out of the people's control uh except they repent then they repent and god is like here's your rain here the the serpents are no longer poisonous hey your curaloms just happen to wander back into their stocks uh, so I, I point that out because like Utah right now is undergoing a major climate yeah. disaster and it's, it's like, scary. it's already a fucking desert out there, but like the salt lake is drying up and letting out just like toxic levels of arsenic and all sorts of primordial chemicals that are very, very harmful. And so often Mormons want to say, oh, it's because this world is going to hell in a handbasket. Oh, it's because the world is so sinful. Oh, it's because the gays can get married. And, and they do that because passages like this out of the Book of Mormon talk about these natural disasters and these famines happening as being the will of God instead of being, you know, like pollution and fossil fuel emission and a lack of water management and natural resource management by the government and by the people individually, right? So like this allows people to abdicate their responsibility to live a clean and like sustainable life because whatever is going on, oh, that's just part of God's will. It's because the world is so damn sinful. So I like that stuff like that, right? The, like, this is not the first time that we've read this sentiment in the Book of Mormon, but that's just this is here is where it's very stark that it just spurns or it just negates a lot of action that people might take to actually make the world better because, oh, well, we're just all subject to God's will. It's getting lit right now, though, with people like Jody Hildebrandt and um, Ruby Frankly and Lo Lori Vallow and even like a it's scary because these people take this to heart that these these this dark spirits getting into their children and they're killing their children and stuff it's yeah. happening in <laughs> right now because of i stuff used to like live this. in las vegas in the early 80s uh, we would go to lake mead which is where hoover dam is and hoover dam or lake mead was a deep place we would there was a lot of lake activities you know houseboats and skiing and all that kind of crap going on and when you go to the dam hoover dam there was an overflow when the lake would get too high it would overflow with this raging torrent of overflow waters it was really quite impressive but the last time i was at lake mead roughly about 10 years ago i want to say the, the water level is 150 feet low uh there were houseboats that were that were on permanent dirt now there's nothing they can do the, the, the water just went away yep. you know and there's there basically is no there's there's a the, there's a remnant of the lake now and this used to you, you, this used to be a hydroelectric dam that provided all of the power for Las Vegas, uh, and now they had to build up they had to build a solar city on the other side of the city so that they, they they could make use of the desert to have all of these solar panels that would run Las Vegas. Can you imagine all the power for that, right? <laughs> but when you when you get hit, there's a there's a major earthquake in San Francisco or somewhere, and and of course the the the, the uh, the, the Christian coalition or whatever says that it, it's caused by women not wearing bras. <laughs> yeah. right. so, so as a scientific experiment, there was a day chosen, and this was like a dozen years or so ago, at least, there was a day chosen when all these women in the secular community particularly had all decided that on this particular day, we're going to go out without bras, all of us, and just see how many earthquakes right. we cause. It was called boob quake. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, that's badass. 
Okay, so uh, and like, next and I also want to mention, right? Like, so the corporate church doesn't lean into conspiracy theories. It tries to uh, like remain ambivalent about conspiracy. But the more fundamentalist sects, the more orthodox, and uh, you know the, those individual sects, and the the members of the corporate LDS church who are more conspiracy minded themselves definitely lean into these tendencies, right? Like, so Warren Jeffs uh, traveled to. Um, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Texas? This. 2006, uh, the big hurricane that hit um, and and destroyed New Orleans. Um, that New Orleans is still trying to recover from. I it, I can't that remember. Was Katrina, that. wasn't it? Hurricane yeah. Katrina. Thank you. Uh, Warren Jeffs traveled to Hurricane uh, uh, to the site of Hurricane Katrina and basically condemned the land because of <laughs> like and he called it that it was such a sinful city that that what had happened was basically God's judgment on that place. And it's amazing because Warren Jeffs himself was um, arrested when he had, you know, like 30 burner phones and, and whatnot because his gambling problem was so bad. Uh, but, I mean, all that is to say that, like, <laughs> fundamentalist Mormons and people who are corporate Mormons but believe in the conspiracy stuff, they lean into this. Like, this is a ubiquitous belief that, you know, the climate disaster that we are responsible for is just God's wrath for the sinful world. But a lot of this stuff's becoming radicalized within it. And it, yep. it's just people that you would think would be normal, like momos and stuff, are becoming radicalized because of this stuff. It, yeah. It's things scary. are wild. So right now. SJL says uh, the, the, that Kuralam is a NASCAR elephant. <laughs> it can only turn left. If it turns right, yeah. it stabs itself. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. And uh, let's see, <laughs> Matt White says, Aaron, huso is indeed a word, albeit a very old, very old, also seen in whoso draweth this sword from the stone, etc. It's just weird that we haven't, all the way through this book, read almost the entire book. That word didn't show up until now. And then it shows up, remember it, like, yeah. inappropriately, and then shows up twice. Different you know? author. <laughs> Different author. Whoever wrote Ether did not write the rest of the book. But how can they write, it came to pass 30 times every chapter? Because that's, that's how you just know the passage of time. <laughs> Instead of writing, and then this happened, you write, and then it came to pass, right? Like, that's just that's just a turn of phrase. Okay. And then Natalie D. Clare offers $20, thank you very much, and says, a progressive friend converted to LDS for some reason I can't get. She says, no woman will go to outer darkness. What? She supports my trans woman identity and says, this is why I'll make it. Is this accurate LDS theology? No. There, no. There's a lot of like queer core movement and stuff in the LDS that have this LDS LSD kind of thing going. Like no, I'm that. just kind of surprised that that would be, that would be related to the theology. I mean, so that's there's kind of a lot to unpack in that, and primarily it res, uh, resides on polygamy, right? So like, women are seen as more righteous in, in Mormonism because like generally m women are you know supposed to be the more religious ones. They're the ones who are getting their kids to church every Sunday, and like they're seen as and and yet the men are the ones who are leaving the church in droves, and that is just a sign of the end times because the new and everlasting covenant, which is say polygamy, will be reinstated during the end time. Right. So there is a pretty common Mormon belief that women are more faithful than men and therefore that the women can, you know, they can't be spared because we're going to need as many women as possible who are faithful for all of the, you know, very few righteous men to be part of their hair. Um, so that's, uh, I, I mean, there's kind of a lot that goes into that. It's kind of hard to unpack. But it's surprising to me that this person supports the trans woman identity because like the church has been very explicit in the past like five years or so with Alan Oaks near the helm that trans anything trans is super evil super unacceptable in the modern culture and if you get surgeries or uh, take hormone therapy in order to change genders uh, in order to transition then that is grounds for excommunication from the church so I'm I'm kind of surprised to see that, but if, by once again, this is one of those cases where like believing members themselves, they can look all over and find little nuggets, and they can believe whatever they want. But like the corporate church as an entity is more what we talk about kind of here on the show. They they have baptized a trans woman recently within the LDS church, and it's been accepted 
but I think there was a loophole where she had her change prior to becoming a member where if you're an existing member, so if you're already a woman and come in, they're starting to accept that. But I think at the same time, you have to be within a, a certain demographic of LDS within a certain part. You couldn't do that in the South or something, but in a more liberal area, like maybe San Francisco, they're starting to let gay cap gay couples have more permission within the church and that it's it's interesting things are changing yeah and that comes down to the leadership roulette right like so a bishop signed off on a trans woman getting baptized uh, authentic to her identity uh but most bishops are not going to sign off on that and that's just the individual leaders making their own choices based on their own biases okay and let me see where i was in this are we moving on to the next chapter? Yeah. yeah. Who's reading? Yeah, 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 two more comments, Arn. Okay. So Skeptical Brain says, you became a son of perdition when you go to outer darkness. So there is a saying that women don't go to outer darkness because you can't be a son of perdition if you're daughter, right? Oh, I, I'm not <laughs> that's a loophole. <laughs> Interesting point. I've never considered yeah. it that way, but that's fair. All right. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of cool. interested in this whole <laughs> thing. I mean, sign me up. Uh, and then <laughs> Lubilar, I have no idea how to say that. The difference between LDS and LSD is that the hallucination wears off with the latter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Beautiful. That yep. is true. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, chapter 10. And it came to pass that Shez, who was a descendant of Heth, dash for Heth, had perished by the famine, and all his household, save it were Shez, dash. Wherefore, Shez began to build up again a broken people. And it came to pass that Shez did remember the destruction of his fathers, and he did build up a righteous kingdom. For he remembered what the Lord had done in br bringing Jared and his brother across the deep. And he did walk in the ways of the Lord. And he begat sons and daughters. And his eldest son, whose name was also Shez, did rebel <laughs> against him. Nevertheless, Shez, <laughs> Shez was smitten by the hand of a robber because of his exceeding riches, which brought peace again unto his father. <laughs> <laughs> My son is such a rich, entitled little trust fund <laughs> asshole. I can't wait for a robber to kill him. <laughs> yes, the good guy of our story. <laughs> terrible. And, yeah. And it came to pass that his father did build up many cities upon the face of the land, and the people began again to spread over all the face of the land. And Shez did live to an exceedingly old age, and he begat Riplakish, and he died, and Riplakish reigned in his stead. And it came to pass that Riplakish did not do that which was right in the sight of the Lord, for he did have many wives and concubines, and right. did lay, <laughs> and did lay right. that upon men's shoulders, men's shoulders of men. Okay, uh, which which was grievous to be borne. Yeah, he did tax them with heavy taxes. And with the taxes, he did build many spacious buildings. All right, all right. I got to just pause real quick, because when it comes to the debate about polygamy, because we have Doctrine and Covenants section 101, which is known as the monogamy revelation. It says that one man should have one wife and one wife should have one man. Uh, that was canon. That was scripture until 1876 when the Brighamites were like, no, we're getting rid of that. And when instead, we're going to put in DNC 132, which is the polygamy revelation, saying that you can only get to heaven if you have like 10 wives. Uh, but so much of the debate about the polygamy in the Book of Mormon centers around the Book of Jacob. Because in Jacob, at the very beginning of the Book of Mormon, it's first Nephi, second Nephi, and then Jacob comes up soon after that, right? Jacob is where it condemns multiple wives, where it condemns polygamy. And there's some wishy-washy language, and you can change the meaning of the sentence via punctuation changes uh, to mean that polygamy is acceptable or polygamy is abhorrent in the sight of God. 
But I don't see people talk much about that passage right here in Ether chapter 10, verse 5, where it says, Replicish did not uh, did not do that which was right in the sight of the Lord, for he did have many wives and concubines. They'll always go to the concubines. Oh, it's because of the. It's not because of the many wives. It's because of the many <laughs> concubines that Ripley yeah. was a, a bastard. Okay, I see. I see. It's, uh, I don't know. Well, I'm just pointing this out. Discrepancy in the theology of Mormonism uh, from the, what the scriptures say to what they actually practice. That's all. The only reason. I put that. Yeah. Here. Here. Uh huh. And he did erect him an exceedingly beautiful throne. And he did, <laughs> and he did build many prisons. And whoso would not be subject unto taxes, he did cast into prison. And whoso was not able to pay taxes, he did cast into prison. And he did cause that they should labor continually for their support. And whoso refused to labor, he did cause he put to death. Wherefore, so now we're up to we, we're up to five whosos. <laughs> out of the blue like yeah yep two in one verse uh wherefore he did obtain all his fine work yeah even his fine gold he did cause to be refined in prison and all manner of fine workmanship he did cause to be wrought in prison and and it came to pass that he did afflict the people with his whoredoms and abominations and when he had reigned for the space of forty and two years, the people did rise up in rebellion against him. And there began to be war again in the land, insomuch that Replakish was killed, and his descendants were driven out of the land. And it came to pass that after the space of many years, Moriantum, he being a descendant of Replakish, gathered together an army of outcasts, and went forth and gave battle unto the people, and he gained power over many cities, and the war became exceedingly sore, and did last for the space of many years, and he did gain power over all the land, and did establish himself king over all the land. And after that he had established himself king, he did ease the burden of the people, by which he did gain favor in the eyes of the people, and they did anoint him to be their king. And he did do justice unto the people, but not unto himself because of his many hard arms. Wherefore, <laughs> he was cut. <laughs> Wherefore, he was cut. <laughs> he was cut off from the presence of the Lord. And it came to pass that Morianton built up many cities, and the people became exceedingly rich under his reign both in buildings and in gold and silver, and in raising grain, and in flocks and herds, and such things which had been restored unto them. And Morianton did live to an exceedingly old great age, and then he begat Kim Jong-un, and Kim Jong-un <laughs> did reign in the stead of his father, and he did reign eight years. Wait, wait, Kim <laughs> and... Jong-un? Yeah. I'm just wondering if this might be proof of Asian origin. <laughs> there you go. Pacific <laughs> Island, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it came to pass that Kim Jong-un did not reign in righteousness. Wherefore, he was not favored of the Lord. And his brother did rise up in rebellion against him, by which he did bring him into captivity. And he did remain in captivity all his days. And he begat sons and daughters in captivity, and in his old age he begat Levi, and he died. And it came to pass that Levi did serve in captivity after the death of his father for the space of forty and two years. And he did make war against the king of the land, by which he did obtain unto himself the kingdom. While and in captivity, apparently. That's, uh, that's pretty effective. Mm -hmm. Look, no, so I, look, Kim was brought into Kim Il sung, Kim, Kim Jong un, whatever, whoever what we're Kim talking about here, was brought into captivity, was in, you know, enslaved, and he worked the rest of his life till death in captivity, and apparently had sons and daughters while a slave. And his son, a slave, Levi, 
apparently while in captivity for 42 years was able to raise up an army and overthrow the government i'm just saying those prison guards kind of suck <laughs> it's a, you know in the 1800s it was really common for it's a like endangered servitude type of thing where you'd end up having to join a family and work off all your life you're not a slave but you're like a you're just somebody that parents couldn't afford you so you go work for somebody and then you have to work them off i'm wonder if that is this 1800 kind of thing yeah working I've been forced its way to sell in. you all for medical medical experiments <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and after he had obtained unto himself the kingdom he did that which was right in the sight of the lord and the people did prosper in the land and he did live to a good old age, and begat sons and daughters. And he also begat Coram, whom he anointed king in his stead. And it came to pass that Coram did that which was good in the sight of the Lord all his days. And he begat many sons and daughters. And after he had seen many days, he did pass away, even like unto the rest of the earth. And Kish reigned in his stead. And it came to pass that Kish passed away also, and Lib reigned in his stead. And it came to pass that Lib also did that which was good in the sight of the Lord. And in the days of Lib, the poisonous serpents were destroyed. Nice, the Libs. The Libs conquered. <laughs> Conquering evil. Uh, we did tread on them, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I saw your recent video, Aaron. So <laughs> it was going, written for the libs. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Wherefore they did go into the land southward to hunt food for the people of the land, for the land was covered with animals of the forest. And Lib also himself became a great hunter. And they built a great city by the narrow neck of land, yeah. by the place where the sea divides divides the land. Panama again? Yep. yep. <laughs> and they did preserve the land southward for a wilderness to get game. And the whole face of the land northward was covered with inhabitants. And they were exceedingly Whoa. industrious. And they did buy and sell and traffic one with another that they might get gain. Hmm. So the, the 1500s is when Constantine hits the, uh, hits the South America. Stuff. Not Constantine, but who's the guy that takes out the Aztecs oh. and stuff. Um, I can't remember his name either. Cortez? Cortez, Cortez yeah. Cortez. And so I'm, to, I'm just wondering with, with all of this stuff with the Joseph Smith, by the 1800s, they must have known some sort of some stuff about Central America and coming up with hypotheses of how this stuff works and everything. He has to be kind of putting in some nuggets of information that he's getting about Central America and South America in here, wouldn't you think? Well, they didn't have that many books then. Well, uh, they that didn't, but TV. The that burst so the there's whole not a lot else to do Mormon. except yeah and, and sit and talk about you know stuff so maybe yeah and yeah and this is the, like america was the promised land to the white european settlers right so like yeah they, they were coming up with all sorts of theories and writing all sorts of books about it the book of mormon is just one of those many books i mean we're 200 years after cortez went through there and you know the the Spaniards and the Portuguese, they pillaged all that stuff. They, it was showing up in museums in France and, and England and everywhere. They're, you know, they didn't understand this stuff. It was just like these weird, there's no archaeological type of stuff going, but they're raiding these pyramids and pulling all this stuff out of here. I don't know. I'm sure there was speculation going on where he's like, I'm going to figure this stuff out and put it in my book. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if he did figure it out. He'll just because you know, when when people figure it out, it'll be after he's dead. Exactly. So he can yeah. pretend that nobody knows Egyptian. Yeah. For example. That's the book of Abraham and what's happened before the Rosetta Stone was found. He was yeah. able to say, "I could say anything I want because no one knows Egyptian." 
All right, right. Tomir, where which verse are you on? Twenty-three. And they did walk in all manner of ore, and they did make gold, and silver, and iron, and brass, and all manner of metals. And they did dig it out of the earth. Wherefore, they did cast up mighty heaps of earth to get ore, of gold, and of silver, and of iron, and of copper. And they did walk all manner of fine work. You think and we they... would maybe find some of those mines? It says explicitly yeah. they did cast up mighty heaps of earth to get the ore, iron ore, silver ore, <laughs> gold ore, and brass ore, brass ore. Are you fucking kidding me? I, but I'm just, this is baffling to me, right? If you don't find the mines themselves, maybe you find some of the refineries. Maybe you find some of the metallurgy shops where they were actually like, you know, taking the refined metals and turning them into metal goods. Or maybe you find some of the metal goods themselves. Oh, I just want to. We're finding more every you. day. I want to. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, the idiot you debated. We find it. We find more every day. <laughs> this is not the There's archaeology one thing you're you for. found. <laughs> Copper and gold yesterday? can. <laughs> Copper and gold is too soft, too. You know, there are copper and gold type of things, and but everything else is glass, obsidian. Yeah, if you're making weapons. You don't make a weapon out of gold. No. Yeah, make them out of uranium. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're pretty good at that. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> mm. Okay. Um, and they did have silks and fine twined linen, and they did walk all manner of cloth, and they might clothe themselves from their nakedness. They might. Might. Yeah. Were they mixing fabrics? That's my question. <laughs> oh, it's, that's shotness. That's illegal. <laughs> I know. And they did make all manner of tools to till the earth both to plow and to sow, to reap and to hoe, and also to thrash. Because it, it didn't rhyme if you don't throw throw in there. Yeah. Oh, throw and thrash. And they did make all manner of tools with which they did walk their beasts. <laughs> and wonder how they no were the, of burden. Uh, the no beast of burden in pre-Columbian America. Seriously, those pyramids were built by human beings. No beasts of burden. <laughs> <laughs> and they did make all manner of weapons of war. And they did walk all manner of walk of exceedingly curious workmanship. Curious. Okay. And sure. never could be a people more blessed than they were. And more prospered by the hand of the Lord. And they were in a land that which... That was choice above all lands, for the Lord had spoken it. And it came to pass that Lib did live many years, and begat sons and daughters. And he also begat Hartom. <laughs> and uh, I remember like Ether 1, where like, Hartom and Lib was... A, it just repeats itself. And never could be a... Uh, sorry, I read this one. Um... Verse thirty, and it and it came to pass that ha <laughs> that Hartom reigned in the stead of his father, and when Hartom had reigned twenty and four years, behold, the kingdom was taken away from him, Whoa. and he served many years in captivity, yeah, even all the remainder of his days, and he begat Heth, and Heth lived in captivity all his days. And Heth begot Aaron, and Aaron dwelt in the cap in captivity all his days. And he begat Amnigada, and Amnigada also dwelt in captivity all his days. And he begat Coriantum, and Coriantum dwelt in captivity all his days. And he begat Dotcom, another <laughs> one. Dot com. Yeah. <laughs> and it came to pass that Dotcom drew away the half of the kingdom. And he reigned over the half of the kingdom forty and two years. That number appears. Okay, so your generations as a slave. <laughs> yeah. you, you, your, your father was a slave. Your grandfather was a slave. All your life, never did anything. And suddenly, <laughs> there's not even a story there. How do you? How do you? How you were generations in slavery, and then suddenly you're king. Yeah. 
And that's Anybody else? This, this book is like this when people talk when Mormons talk about the book of Ether, they talk about the wooden submarines and don't remember anything else. The wooden submarines and the magic Zohar stones that God touched with his finger and then showed his whole naked body to the brother of Jared. That's what they talk about. That all happens in the first four chapters. This is the rest <laughs> of Ether, this begat bullshit, begat in captivity, and then the begat 42 years in captivity. And then somehow, while in captivity, they again overthrow the government. This I, Did I miss Jesus <laughs> showing his naked body? <laughs> I'm, I'm maybe taking some liberties with the text a little bit there in early year ether but he did show all of himself unto the brother of jared okay i hope we, i hope we just bring back the daughter of jared too because that's a really good today has been awesome like forget the submarines we want female assassins cutting off the heads of their grandfathers and that's what we want there you go that was taken out of the bible too though wasn't it a lot of heads were lost in the Bible. <laughs> I was, trying, was, it, was it Herod? <laughs> anyway, never mind. We'll let it go. <laughs> Continue, Tomer. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. And, and it came to pass that Com drew away the half of the kingdom, and he reigned over the half of the kingdom forty and two years. And he went to battle against the king, Amgid. And they... Amgid. Am Amgid. <laughs> <laughs> I am good. The eye <laughs> silent. <I'm good. laughs> the eye silent. And they fought for the space of many years, during which time dot com gained power over Amgid and obtained I'm good. our I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> and You need anything power. from the store? No, I'm good. <laughs> I think and, this is a Nawa a Nawadal word where like Tezcatlacopa is actually a sentence rather than a, a name. And so you're actually saying the black smoking god. So Amaginagaga Dada. It's actually a sentence, not a name. I'm just going back to Tezcatlacopa, Quizaquatl. All the all the names of the in South America are actually long titles. That's why they're unpronounceable, is because it's like a six syllable name is Quiz Cat Quiz Cat Lapoca actually is a title. <laughs> <laughs> like a whole thing, right? Yeah. I should name one of my kids that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a Mormon apologist, so I have to <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> sorry. Okay. <laughs> and, and in the days of dot com there began to be robbers in the land, and they adopted the old plans and administered oaths after the manner of the ancients, and sought again to destroy the kingdom. Now, dot com did fight against them much. Nevertheless, he did not prevail against them. That's what we call the dot com boom. And that's such a, <laughs> that's such a shitty place to end the chapter, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's not where I mind does, the original. That's why mine doesn't end yet. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep, yep. What does yours do, Gazelle? Just keeps on going. Okay. I cannot keep on going because I've got to do another show and I have to prep for that in like 10 minutes. So we're going to have to leave it here. Um, nice. do, do appreciate everybody. Uh, thank you for all that. And do we have any comments before we leave? Nope. Okay. Eclipse is better than General Conference. That's why I'm here. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And that that's tomorrow, and I'm going to have fun with that because the 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 the, the path of totality he, seems to be completely matched by the cloud cover they're predicting for the entire United States. <laughs> yeah, yeah, travel luck. Yeah, it's and still going to happen. Where I, am, <laughs> where I am, they're predicting thunderstorms. So we're going to be watching. We're we're going to be watching the radar and trying to figure out where we can dodge the cloud cover. <laughs> Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's still going to happen whether you can see it or not. Yeah. <laughs> so the thunderstorms will get a tiny bit darker for about two minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you much.
you next week, guys. Okay, we're almost done.